Welcome to Electron Online, and here we're going to redo a problem that I did in a previous video. And it turned out I did it incorrectly. I forgot to include some of the resistors as I was reducing the circuit into a simpler circuit, skipped it, ended up with a wrong answer. And one of the viewers, thankfully, uh, caught the error and pointed it out to me. And I go, oh yes, I have to redo this one again. So here's my second attempt at the spider circuit where we're trying to find the total resistance between A and B of this particular spider circuit. And so the first thing you want to do is take the circuit and redraw it in a way where you can make more sense out of it. And notice that electrically speaking, this is the exact same circuit as this circuit. And we'll point that out to you in just a moment. So first of all, uh, this point where they all come together to middle is the same as these connections right here. This here is exactly the same as that. We'll see that in just a moment. Now, these three resistors, the one between A and B, which is this one, and then this resistor and that resistor, which comes together like this, is the same as these three resistors. So let me circle those out. There you go. So that's the same as these three resistors right here. So far, so good. Now, these two resistors here are the same as these two resistors there. So let me get a different color for that. So I'll get brown to indicate this resistor and this resistor is the same as this resistor and this resistor. So notice that leaving A and B going up and down is the same as going up through that resistor and up through this resistor. All right. Now when you get to this junction right here, that's the same as this junction right here. And now you can see that you can go down from that junction down to this spot, from that junction down to this spot, through these two resistors. So those are these two resistors right there. So maybe I'll go ahead and point that out with a different color. So we can use purple for this resistor and this resistor, which is the same as this one and this one right there. So if we then were to continue along the top, you go across these two resistors. Those are the same as those two. You get to this junction, which is right here. You get to this junction, which is right there. Then you go through those two resistors to get to this point right here. Or finally, you can go to the final resistor here, which is the same resistor as the one back there. So you can see, it's the exact same circuit. Now, what's nice about this circuit is if you look at it, you can see that there's total symmetry between the top half of the circuit and the bottom half of the circuit. And because of this total symmetry, we can then say that whatever current goes to this branch must be exactly the same as the current goes to, going through this branch. And whatever current goes to this branch should be exactly the same as the current going through this branch. And likewise, whatever current goes to this resistor must be exactly the same as the current going to that resistor. So the current here and here is the same, there and there is the same, and there and there is the same. There's no reason for any current to go back and forth on this particular branch. And so what we could actually do is we can eliminate that branch. We could simply say there's no current flowing through here, so we can simply eliminate that and eliminate that, and we should end up with the exact same circuit. So now I'm going to redraw that circuit without those two connections there, and let's see what we get. So we still have the... Uh, the resistor between A and B is this resistor right there. We have those two resistors, one this way, one this way, and then coming down together, connected, but no longer connected here because that was not necessary. So we have another resistor up here and another resistor down there. They come together to those two connections. And so notice there's a resistor coming this way and a resistor coming up this way. Connected here, but no longer connected to this branch right there. We have another resistor in this direction, another resistor here, and again, two resistors coming down this way, and another resistor this way. That's those two resistors, and finally, we have the one at the back. All right, so now what I'm claiming here is that this is exactly the same as this, which is exactly the same as that, but now it's a lot easier to deal with because we can simplify that one using parallel and series combination techniques. So the first thing we can do is combine those two and then combine that with that. So if all of these have the value of resistance R, and let me write that again. So this is R, this is R, 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 R. They're all the same resistance, R, R. And of course, you can do the same problem when the resistances are not all the same. Of course, as long as, long as there's total symmetry between the top and the bottom, for example, we can make this a 2R resistor, but then this would have to be a 2R resistor for everything to be perfectly symmetric on top and on the bottom. Okay, so let's combine these two. So if you combine these two resistors into one resistor, and I'm going to go ahead and do that, like so, and then simply call it a single 2-ohm resistor, so for, the, for having some space, so this will now become a 2R resistor. 
because adding r plus r in series is indeed 2r, and now I can combine these two right there. So this r and this 2r, and that is in parallel. So when we add two resistors in parallel, I then take r total of this branch right here, so let's call that combination 1, so total 1 is equal to the product over the sum, because they're in parallel, so it's r times 2r divided by r plus 2r. So I'm simply finding the equivalent resistance of those last two branches right there. And I realize that when I combine these two resistors, since they're in series, that becomes a single resistor of 2R. I can now ignore this and this because it's being replaced by 2R resistor. So let me just put this through there like that. So I'm combining an R and a 2R resistor. I do it like that. So this becomes 2R squared divided by 3R. And then this cancels out that. So this gives me a 2 thirds R resistance for the last two branches. So I'm now going to replace this portion of the circuit by a single resistor equal to two-thirds R. So I'm coming over here and redrawing the circuit. So we still have our A to B, a resistor in between. Come up here, I have a resistor this way, I have a resistor this way, resistor this way, and a resistor this way. These two are connected here. The ones on top and bottom, they're connected to this one right there. And notice I can combine the two resistances here and call it a 2R resistor. So coming down here, this now becomes a single 2R resistor. These are still single R resistors. Like that, that hasn't changed. So what I did was here, combine these two. I still have those two right there. So I have a resistance here, we have a resistance there. This is R, this is R. And finally, in the back, those two branches now combined are equal to 2 thirds R resistance. So here we have a single two-thirds R resistor. Now what I can do is I can combine these three resistances right here because they're all in series with one another. So I'm going to redraw the circuit. I still have the A and the B. Single resistor running between those two points. I have those two resistors. Now again, I can combine those two already. I can call those a 2R resistance as well. So make that into a single 2R resistor. So this is R, this is 2R. I still have the ones on top and the bottom. These are still R resistors, like that. So far, so good. So what we did is we took those two. They're in series, combined them to make a 2R. I come to this branch right here. That gives me a single 2R resistor. And now when I combine these three together, it's R plus R plus 2 thirds R. Okay, so that becomes a single resistor. And so let's come over here and do the math. So R total in the second branch, that would be the second branch right here, that's equal to R plus R plus 2 thirds R. All right, so if I want to use the same common denominator, that is 3 over 3R three plus 3 over 3R three plus 2 over 3R, so I can add them together easier. So that would be 3 plus 3 plus 2, that would be 8 thirds R, and that's the equivalent resistance of these three resistors right here. So that forms an 8 thirds R resistor, 8 over 3 R. Okay, now I can combine these two right here. Those are in parallel, so for that I need to use the product over the sum. So let's call that now combining 3. So that gives me R total 3, which is equal to the product of the two, that is 2 R times 8 thirds R divided by the sum, which is 2R plus 8 thirds R. Okay, when we do that, this is equal to 16 over 3R squared, simply multiplying the two together, divide by, okay, 2R is the same as 6 over 2R or 9 over, no, 6 over 3R. I'll take that back. So what I'm doing here is 2R is the same as 6 over 3R. I want to do that because I want to have it on the same denominator. So 6 over 3R plus 8 over 3R is 14 over 3R. So 2R plus 8 thirds R ends up being 14 thirds R. Simplifying that, this cancels out that, over 3 over 3 that cancels, and 16 divided by 14 is 8 over 7. So this becomes 8 over 7R, which means that these two combined form a single resistor of value 8 sevenths R.
So now this becomes the following circuit. I still have the resistor between A and B. This is R. I still have the two on top. And on the bottom, I still have the 2R resistor right there. And now these combined turn into an 87R, 87R resistor. There we go. 8 over 7R. This is R and this is R. Right there. Okay, the next step is to go ahead and combine these three resistors. So I have an R plus an R plus an 8 over 7R, and of course R can be written as 7 over 7R. So these combined, and I think I probably want to come all the way over here and use the bottom portion of the board to finish up the problem. Okay, so now I have the resistor between A and B, which is right here, A and B. I still have my 2R resistance right here, so I'll call this R and 2R. And now I have this branch right here. I can combine all those resistors into a single resistor. Like that. So that single resistor is simply the sum of R plus R plus 8, 7 R. So that's 7 over 7 plus 7 over 7 plus 8 over 7. That's 22 over 7 R. Right there. Okay, almost there. Now what I can see is I have basically three branches in parallel. I can go from A to B through this resistor, through that resistor, and through the third resistor. So it's like having three resistors in parallel. So to finally get to a single resistor from A to B, I need to find the equivalent resistance of those three resistors. And for that, I'm going to use the technique that 1 over R total equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So that becomes 1 over R plus 1 over 2R plus 1 over 22 over 7R. 1 over 22 over 7R. That, the R needs to go to the denominator. Okay, like this, which is the same as 7 over 22R, so I could put the 7 up here. And finally, what I need to do now is write that all over a common denominator. So I put the 22 over 7, I put over 7 in the numerator. So now the common denominator here is 22, so this is equal to 22 over 22R plus 11 over 22R plus 7 over 22R. Oop, the R still goes in the denominator. Hang there with me. We're almost there. So now I have 22 plus 11 plus 7. That's 33 plus 7, which is 40 over 22R. 40 over 22R. And finally, when I want to find the total resistance, I simply take the inverse of that, so I can say that our total is equal to the inverse of that, which is 22 over 40R, which is wrong. Okay, it's not wrong, it's right. Okay, all right, good, here we are. Which is equal to 11 over 20R, which, by the way, is the correct answer. <laughs> all right, so recapping, it's quite a problem. We have a spider web trying to find the total resistance between A and B. The best way to do is to go ahead and redraw it like this. And of course, using the color coding here, we can see that we have the equivalent circuit. And again, since there's a, par there's a total symmetry between the top half of the circuit and the bottom half of the circuit, we know that the currents in the bottom half of the circuit must be exactly the same as the currents in the top half of the circuit, which allows us to simply remove these two connections right here. They're no longer necessary because there's no current flowing through there. We might as well take them out. Now we have a circuit we can, we, we can readily simplify. Of course, readily means just doing things very carefully, one step at a time. These two resistors together become 2R, parallel branch, then turns into, where am I, right here, right here, that becomes a 2 thirds R by combining those two together. Then we can combine these three together, which gives us 8 thirds of an R, Then these two are in parallel, we get 8 sevenths, eight sevenths of an R, then these three are in series, that gives us 22 over 7R, 
Then we realize that these three are in parallel. When we combine them together, we get a single resistor of 11 over 20R. And that's how you do that problem. And that is indeed the correct answer for the spider web circuit.